hearts race. And the crowd goes wild. All across the nation, the Dirt Track Warriors duke it out for what matters the most. The trophy and the glory. This is Gas and Glory, presented by r r Enterprises. And welcome to Gas and Glory, the place where we talk about what matters the most, the trophy and the glory. Kyle Luters joined alongside Squeal and Neil Quick and direct from Indianapolis this week, nerd racer Nick Stevens. Nick is with us this week to give us the full lowdown on the World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series events at Eldora Speedway. And oh, by the way, we have a very awesome interview coming up with one of the winners this past weekend, Shane Stewart. But before we get started, Squeal... What is on your head? <laughs> Headphones, Kyle. Not that. Uh, sunglasses? Not that either. How about my stocking hat? Yeah, the stocking cap that makes it look like you have ponytails? Well, I mean, it's a little different. Yeah, just you, just a little bit, huh? You I, look, just, I just got to fit uh, all these nicknames you guys come up with me for. You, uh, you look like Quickie Long Stockings oh, tonight. All right, <laughs> add another to the list. Quickie Longstocking, Neil Quick here, and uh, the voice you just heard, one of our very talented artists here at r and joining us this week on Gas and Glory, Nick Stevens. And Nick, welcome into the podcast. Thanks for being here. Ah, thanks for having me in this week uh, in the office, visiting you guys, doing some work, well, doing some awesome designs. Nick doing work. Yeah, Nick doing work. You marking that down? Yeah, yeah every every once in a while. Hold on a second. The art work, the art, the artist department here does work. It's just the sales and the marketing staff that uh, it's questionable. Let's get this right. We're the, kind of the glue that holds it all together there in the sales department. Um, well, yeah. That, mm-hmm. Okay, moving right along. Uh, like we mentioned well, we got earlier, off that quick, didn't we? <laughs> moving right along, uh, we did mention a little bit earlier. Shane Stewart. We'll have an interview with him in just a little bit, uh, guys. First World of Outlaw start for Larson Marks Racing. Shane Stewart and the number two team put it in victory lane on the opening night when the Outlaws take to Eldora. Your guys' thoughts? Uh, they were strong all night. I mean, from the get-go, they were out there um, fast in qualifying, fast in the dash, uh, good in their heat race, and Shane just drove away with it. I mean, in the feature, nobody could touch him. Joey got close to him a couple times, but... For the most part, he was just out there by himself, walking away from all the guys. Well, I think Kyle called it in the office on Thursday night. We were talking about it and with Shane uh, debuting uh, with the World of Outlaws at Eldora. I think Kyle called it straight out of the shoot. He goes, uh, Shane's definitely going to be tough to beat. And sure enough, uh, he was the guy to beat on Friday night. Well, you know, the team had gone and made their debut at Port Royal Raceway the weekend before with the UNOH All-Star Circuit of Champions. And Port Royal is a track where you have to have an engine combination that will run. And certainly with a fourth place finish, we did see that out of the Larson Marks team. So, yeah, Eldora, first victory. That team has to feel great. They're out of the gate. So certainly uh, congratulations to him. Another tip of the cap, it seems like we're talking about this guy every week on Gas and Glory. Rico Abreu picks up his seventh winged sprint car win of the season. That's just the winged sprint car victories in the Dave Bradway Memorial. And Boy, is old Rico dominant out oh west out there gosh, or what? King of the West. He, is, he really is the king of the West right now. They haven't given him the, the season-ending championship check or the trophy, but, guys, he's dominant right now. Anywhere he goes. Yeah, he is uh, very, very solid out there. And, man, Rico is uh, exciting to watch. Uh, hope he keeps up the good work and putting it in victory lane, man. Just shows that uh, after a few years of experience out there in a sprint car, sometimes things just click. You just, you know, you get with the right, uh, you get with the right crew chief. Uh, communicate He's with Paul well. Silva now. Yep, get you start communicating well with your crew chief and uh, get your setups right every right. You could go out there and be completely dominant. Well, I think Enrico's deal. I think that uh, Kyle following in his footsteps been a good template for him. So I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Look at the ways came up out of the outlaw carts, uh, going through the midget with uh, Keith Coons and jumping in the wing sprint car. I mean, this kid's got the uh, the right thing going here. The only thing I'm worried about is that in a couple of years we're going to lose him to pavement stuff. You know, much like Larson has. Yeah, but at least those guys still get the opportunity to come back and uh, you know participate, dabble possibly in team ownership, and uh, they still get to participate every once in a while, and that's still good to see those guys come back and really be champions of the sport of dirt track racing when they're talking during their interviews. 
A few more guys we want to touch base on. Uh, Craig Delansky picked up a win at Oshkosh Speed Zone Raceway up in Wisconsin with the IRA. Uh, that was a pretty good race for him. I mean, Craig's now picked up two victories on the season, one at Knoxville, and then he's also won at Oshkosh. Yeah, back-to-back weekends, uh, getting a Knoxville win and then uh, winning up there in Wisconsin. And looks like he's going to have a good weekend this weekend coming up here, too, coming up. Mm-hmm. And then taking a look also to Matt Maver, Modifieds. He wins again. He's been on a tear this year. Our good friend, the Hermanator, Kenny Wallace, went out to Western Kentucky, picked up another W. Yeah, he was. Uh, he ran Macon uh, uh, Thursday night, and then uh, Tri City on Friday. Macon, he ended up, uh, I think, eighth and third at Tri City, and then picked up the win Saturday in Western Kentucky. That's you're a good deal. S- you're spending a lot of time with the Herminator lately, aren't you, Neil? Yeah, well, we're getting really close. <laughs> You've been appearing in a few of his Vine videos, haven't you? I've told you that's not by choice, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Macon, Bobby Pierce. We continue to talk about this young man in a late model. He wins the Lucas Oil Late Model Show. Big time money. All the big stars were at Macon, and he bested them all. These guys got to start putting parachutes on Bobby Pierce. Uh huh. You're, you're somebody's exactly somebody's right. got to slow him down. I mean, kids on fire. You are exactly right, and uh, we just want to give a huge congrats to all of these drivers and all the Team R&R guys on a great weekend. Now, a little bit earlier this week, we had the chance to catch up with the driver of the Larson Marks Racing number 2, Shane Stewart, and here is that interview. And we're very excited to be joined at this time by the driver of the number 2 Larson Marks Racing Machine. It is Shane Stewart. Shane, uh, first off, congratulations and welcome to Gas and Glory, bud. I, uh, I greatly appreciate it. it uh, it's been uh, a, a last a good last couple weekends for um, this new team, and just uh, the lucky man that uh, gets to drive the, that number two, and and uh, so far so good. So I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to the remainder of the summer, and and um, hopefully we can uh, pick up a few more wins. You're absolutely right there. And uh, talking about strong out of the chute, you guys head up to Port Royal Raceway to run with the All-Stars, and you finished in the top five. And then you go to Eldora. Your very first World of Outlaws start as a team, and you guys park it in victory lane. And, you know, Neil and I come in every Monday morning and check out the video highlights from a dozen different places. And that number two car was riding a rail on Friday night. Describe how good that car felt. Well, we were actually um, really good right out of the box. Uh, the track had a little bit more moisture in it than, than a normal outdoor track. Um, it did get up close to the fence, you know, towards the, the later part of the night. But um, Justin, uh, um, not Justin, I'm sorry, Steve actually had my car uh, working really, really well. And we honestly didn't change a whole lot as the night went on. And after the dash... Uh, I told Steve, I'm like, man, I said, if I can get a good start and keep my nose clean, I said, I honestly think we have a really good shot at winning. And <clears throat> we were kind of kidding around in the trailer, and I asked him if he'd ever won a, a race as a crew chief at, at Eldora, and he said no. And, um, of course, his wife, Carol, was like, you know, don't be jinxing yourself here. <laughs> and I said, I'm not. I'm not. I'm yeah. just asking. Yeah. So it's, uh, I was really, really, really excited to get uh, my first win at Eldora with the Outlaws, uh, with this new team. And, uh, it was cool to see, to have Justin and Aaron there. And I hated that, uh, Kyle couldn't make it, but hopefully we can, uh, we can win in front of him sometime this summer. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a big win for me personally. I, 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 uh, you know, I've had some good runs there in the past, but, uh, never was able to, to park it in Richard Lane. And, uh, just a special night for, for myself and the whole team. Uh, all of our sponsors, and uh, to get a win this soon with a, with a new team uh, kind of says a lot about the guys working on it and the equipment that Justin's put underneath us and uh, Justin and Kyle, excuse me, has put underneath uh, us. So uh, I'm, I'm really, really excited about the future of this team. Hey, uh, Shane, this is Neil. Uh, just asking the question, I know uh, as good as you guys ran out of the shoot on Friday, um, being on the downside of things, what uh, what was the difference in Saturday night? I know you started 11th and finished 15th. Were you guys off on something on that night, or? Well, it was just a lot slicker. Um, I I wasn't very good in my heat race. Uh, I qualified ninth, the same same place I qualified on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference was is I won my heat race Friday, did not win my heat race on Saturday, and um, you know the way the outlaw format is. 
the qualifying is so important. If you don't qualify in the top four, um, and and you do get yourself on the front row of a heat race, you have to win it to get yourself on the dash. Right. And uh, I just wasn't able to do that, and um, actually held around the top ten most the first part of the race. We had a restart, and I had a terrible restart. Ooh. Um, and uh, just I honestly lost like four or five spots in one corner. And it took me the remainder of the race to, to actually get back up to those guys. And um, my car was actually really good at the end of the race. It just didn't show it. And um, I, just, I just needed to get better on my restarts. I, I, I got a long side guy, and, and I thought I kind of had it passed. And, and um, I, when I slowed down to keep from running over him, it just killed my momentum. And that's I, Eldora. It, yeah, that's momentum. what I was going to so, say. That's, that's a lot of Eldora where – it is a momentum track, and depending on what the grooves and what's running that night, I mean, it, it, it does it, it'll eat you up. Um, but uh, good to see that uh, you guys did come out of the shoot good with Port Royal and then having a good finish and winning one on a Friday night. And like I said, I hate to be the bad news, news guy. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. That, <laughs> you know, you just, I just think you just picked the bad question there, you know. We, we, we give you all the questions anyways. you got to be Debbie Downer over there. But it happens. And, Honestly, uh, Shane, he's actually got this on my sheet. Yeah. And he huh? always gives me the bad questions. Yeah, he always blames. Yeah. Can, can, can you tell this is like Laurel and Hardy over here? Somebody's <laughs> yeah. smacking each other in the head with a hat. So, uh, that's funny. But, but, no, it's great, and it's great to see uh, another – sprint car team come out with you know quite a bit of resources and funding behind it so let's go back to october and november of last year shane how quickly did this whole team come together and kyle and justin getting together and you agreeing to drive the car i mean i mean we we were all just kind of watching wait to see what would happen and uh you know it made for some big news around the world finals last year so describe how this team got off and rolling well, um, Justin and, and Kyle became buddies. Justin actually owns uh, the Motorplex, uh, GoPro Motorplex, which is a really, really nice go-kart track in Mooresville. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the NASCAR guys go out there and play around on their go-karts. And uh, Kyle uh, was introduced to uh, Justin, and uh, they just uh, hit it off and, and became really good friends. And, and Kyle had mentioned to Justin about having a sprint car team and, and Justin's like, well, you know, let's try to make that happen. And that kind of got the ball rolling. They approached me and uh, it actually took me a little while to, to confirm that, uh, that I was going to race with them. I, I had another great opportunity on my plate mm-hmm. with big game and uh, it was pretty nerve wracking for me. But, you know, at the end of the day, I felt like, um, well, I know I made the right decision now, but even at that yeah. point of the, of the game, I felt like I was making the right decision. I mean, it kind of boiled down to those guys having uh, Steve Succi in place already. And oh, yeah. that was one thing I was having an issue is finding somebody that um, that I could trust uh, to run the program like Steve is with LMR. So mm-hmm. uh, Steve was already in place, and, and that was kind of my deciding factor in and uh, man, thank goodness that uh, thank God that I, I decided to go that way because so far, um, you know, it's it's been really good. You got to be super excited to be in, on the track and and getting out there and racing. I know it seems like it's been a long time coming. Well, I'm just super excited to be in one car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, yeah. I can That's actually go up to the. Been, you've been all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's been crazy. It, you, I, you honestly, I was in so many cars that. You go up to uh, look at the lineups, and you're like, but now, yeah, hey, hey, Dale Blaney was actually kidding me the other day because we, for some darn reason, even the first part of uh, this year, I ran uh, the Miles Hill uh, number 77 car at Fremont and mm-hmm. Attica, and me and Dale raced kind of neck and neck at both of those joints, and then we go to Port Royal, and we're racing each other, and then we're racing each other again at uh, Eldora, and, and uh, he was giving me a hard time because he thinks it's my number. That's why I'm so fast. So. <laughs> well, that does make sense. And uh, very happy here to have Shane Stewart joining uh, myself and Neil Quick. This is Gas and Glory. And, you know, Shane, describe a little bit some of the uh, what the schedule is going to look like for you guys coming up this summer. I know you're, uh, you're building towards, uh, hopefully, a full-time outlaw schedule in 2015. But you know, let's talk 2014 in this summer. Talk about some of the uh, some of the schedule. You know, 
caveats that we're going to see, you know, some of the shows that uh, fans can come out and see you in the number two team at? It's it's honestly a, a just a really tentative schedule. Uh, you know, we're going to be true kind of a true outlaw schedule this year. Mm-hmm. We're going to uh, try to make uh, most of Ohio Speed Week. Cool. Uh, Steve and I kind of talked about doing some of the Pennsylvania Speed Week. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, the main thing that I think we're wanting to try to do is try to hit as many outlaw races as we can, just to race those guys as much as possible. And the plan, as of right now, is still to to try to compete for the, the World of Outlaws Championship next year. And, and you know, this year it's kind of a test and tune for us, mm-hmm. um, you know, to make sure me and Steve can – I mean, I think it's going to be fine, but you know how you know how this crazy business is. And, oh, yeah. and um, just make sure that we got our motor program in check. Um, mm-hmm. We know we're happy with our cars. And hopefully when we start next season that we're, we're gung-ho and, and – uh, and you know we are able to uh, to to run well in the points, and you know this is probably my biggest opportunity to be able to compete for the championship. I've wanted to get back with the World of Owls for quite some time. I just haven't haven't been in the, the right situation to make it happen. So I'm uh, I'm excited. Hopefully it all works out good for us. No, it's uh, it sounds like you guys got a lot of things going on there, uh, Shane and. I know uh, really excited to see you guys get on the track, and I've been really excited uh, with you guys' uh, partnership and doing the apparel with us this year. We've been really stoked about that. And, uh, it's great-looking some... stuff. We're pulling that uh, up on our video right now yeah. but so, so the fans can check that out. It's a great-looking design, but didn't mean to bump into you there, Squeal, but I just wanted to make sure folks saw the, the cool-looking design that uh, we were able to put out this year. Yeah, it's uh Shane, Shane came to us, and uh, we've been very fortunate and uh, been a little bit ahead on that. And and uh, he's doing real well selling it himself, and it is available through www.r-rracewear.com. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there's some uh, cool things coming, and uh, I think Kyle's got a promotion he wants to throw out here too. Well, yeah, while we're talking to Shane here, we want to throw this out. Fans, you can get a free R&R T-shirt when you mention that you heard – this episode of Gas and Glory in the notes section, when you go to r-rracewear.com and you go to the checkout, there's a notes section. If you just put in there something like Gas and Glory or you heard this on Gas and Glory, we will match you shirt for shirt. We'll give you a free R&R T-shirt. So if you order one, we'll send you one. If you order six, I'll make Neil go back there and pull six, and I'll make him earn his paycheck, Shane. So uh, before we let you get on out of here, bud, uh, you know, one of the things that we've really been trying to push here on Gas and Glory is to getting to know the guys uh, better, kind of, a, you know, away from the racetrack a little bit as well as on the racetrack a little bit. And I can tell you're getting nervous right now, but don't worry. It's totally fine. Uh, I'm good. We've, we've been talking. All right, what do you want, Squeal? Yeah, I want to run this by him because I know a little bit last week we were talking, uh, Shane, uh, Kyle went on a, I, I'd say, adventure or expedition. He went out there and did some uh, – uh, Drag racing. Drag racing PR for Division 6 and NHRA deal. And uh, he got to see some some of these guys running these snowmobiles down drag strip at 120 plus mile an hour. It and, was awesome. And I guess this Snowmobiles? Was, snowmobile. snowmobile. <laughs> they, they took the oh, blades off the front no of it and way. put skates on the front of this thing. Shane, it was oh. the greatest drag racing I have ever witnessed. It was better than the oh. Nitro Funny Cars. Well, oh, that- Thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've been giving Kyle some ribbon because he's been going around the office and telling me and Ryan and all the guys that uh, he could do this and he can get over 100 on these things. And I, don't th- <laughs> I, I don't think he can get over 20, but I have the ride lined up, baby. It's happening. <laughs> well, that, that, I want to see a video of this. Please. Well, there'll be I, video. I same thing. <laughs> there will be video, folks. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, same thing, buddy. We've, we've, we've asked for video proof, and he's like, well, I'll bring back the uh, time card. I'm like, we don't want to see time card. You'll get card. a signed time card. You'll get a video. I'll even give you my uh, autograph, too. Well, oh, this, man. This comes that's from awesome. a guy that we have a hard time believing he changed the tire on a sprint car. So Hey, hey Shane, so... Can, Shane can attest to this. <laughs> well, yeah, I this... can, actually. <laughs> Boom! All right. Ask your comment. question. Let's go. So uh, I, I want to know, are we going to have any T-shirts, like, you know, Crazy Man Kyle T-shirts? or? Oh, I'm, I've been looking to get some Street Stock Legend T-shirts made. Uh, I'm also a very good Street <laughs> Stock racer. Uh, I think it's the greatest form of American motorsports myself. But That's just uh, because you cannot get out of the street stock class in iRacing. It a, requires extreme skill to race a street stock. iRacing's tough. I can tell you that right now. I'm Thank not a computer you. guy, but my buddy's got one, and that is really hard. <laughs> now, what's I, your, actually, 
I Go. couldn't even get out of the pit area and <laughs> the car, and I got on the on the track and couldn't even make a corner. Well, that's actually Kyle does you probably one better. He gets to turn three and four before he hits usually me. So I mean, that's it's not easy. That's not <laughs> Thank easy. you. See, th- this is why Shane. You know, he's just a great guy. So <laughs> you know, go ahead and ask him what you want to ask him. All right, I got the question for you. Well, this leads us to the idea of asking you what is the most, and this is in Kyle Luter's words, what is the most exotic thing that you have raced? It can be anything. Uh, uh, most hey, exotic. Keep it clean. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, shoot, I'm trying to think. Uh, I honestly really haven't driven a whole lot of other things besides um, sprint cars. Um, you get to wheel some of those uh, you know, drag carts down there? At my Plain. buddy uh, had an IMCA race car, which is, is not very exotic, but uh, mm-hmm. I was actually able to race that a long time ago back uh, in Tulsa. Oh, really? And Okay. All the IMCA guys there in the pit area knew that I was in this race car, and they traumatized the crap out of them the whole night. I'm oh. telling you, and this is no lie, I, I think I literally went straight maybe four laps out of the 25-lap in there because <laughs> they were hitting me left and right. And I know, oh. I know they know that, that there was no way I was going to be able to turn that steering wheel quick enough. I needed a... <laughs> A knob like they have on a forklift. <laughs> that was terrible. That is awesome. That is cool, man. Uh, but that I don't know, man. That's not very exotic. But it was uh, it was traumatizing for me. I can tell you, I've never had <laughs> you, Now, now we just have another word put in on the question. That I mean, that's that that that's it. So, but no, that's I mean, that's great. And uh, so yeah, traumatize Shane in the IMCA modified. But he goes out and just puts a pounding on everybody Friday night at Eldora. Ran great at Port Royal, and uh, sounds like a very good car on Saturday night, Shane. Um, just awesome stuff, man. Glad to see that you're in the ride. Glad to see that uh, we got some cool apparel and gear for you. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to check in with you guys throughout the year. And uh, best of luck to you and the entire Larson Marks team and setting the world on fire here in 2014 and go get that championship next year. All right, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. I just got to tell you, you guys do a great job with my apparel. It's, uh, it's sound like firecrackers right now. I'm- um, it, it's uh, I had a guy send me a little message on Twitter that said something about I hope you have a buttload of apparel this weekend and, <laughs> and um, for Williams Grove. So yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, the, we'll put the Neil fans back to work. really, yeah, exactly. The fans really like that design, and and uh, you know, it obviously helps when you can when you can put Larson's name with it and, and GoPro. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, it it, uh, it definitely helps when you run well and you, you can sell some apparel. But you guys do a great job, so I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it, and I can tell you that uh, you're stocked up for the weekend. I've shipped out uh, a bunch of stuff to you guys. <laughs> there he is, ladies and gentlemen. We'll, we'll be working on a new design here pretty quick. So Very cool. You heard it here first on Gas and Glory. Just a reminder, folks, if you mentioned you heard what happened here on this show today, any order, free R&R T-shirt when you mentioned Gas and Glory in the notes section, r-rracewear.com. Once again, thank you very much. Shane Stewart, good luck, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. All right. That was Shane Stewart, driver of the number two Larson Marks Racing Machine. And thank you very much, sir. That was a wonderful interview. We do appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Take care, bud. Bye-bye. All right. See you. Bye. And what a great time with Shane Stewart. And please remember, if you want to get a free R&R t-shirt, please mention Gas and Glory in the notes section of your order over at www.r-racewear.com. That offer is valid through next Wednesday, May 14th. That's Gas and Glory for a free R&R t-shirt. We'll match the size or sizes of all of the shirts that you order. So that's the really cool thing, folks. If you order one shirt, we send you an extra shirt. If you order six shirts, we'll send you six extra shirts. Be sure to check that out. Get your orders in by next Wednesday, May 14th, to get in on this. And, guys, that's a pretty awesome deal. You're getting a ton of shirts. Time to increase the wardrobe, buddy. You're exactly right. Clean out those old shirts. Bring in the new shirts. <laughs> you got, I couldn't have said it better myself. And, uh, you know, we, uh, it's Kyle Luters and Squeal and Neil Quick here, and we're joined hey, this week. Hey, hey, hang on a second before you guys jump to this. I mean, I might not even have to skip the laundry on this one. I mean, oh I get no shirts. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. You're, you're you're too much, Neil. You're okay. too much. I was just thinking, okay? <laughs> it's Kyle Luters and Neil Quick here on Gas and Glory, and this week we are uh, very privileged to have one of our very talented 
R&R artist here in studio with us. It is nerd racer Nick Stevens. And, and Nick, you got the chance to go over to Eldora this past weekend with World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series. Fill us in. What's going on? Uh, kind of give us some news and tidbits of what's going on in the pit area. Well, I always love going to Eldora, of course. I That's probably the dirt track that I spend more time at than any other track just because of its proximity. Uh, the fact that there's Always multi-night outlaw shows there three times a year, well, two times a year, I guess, with the King's Royal, the spring show. You get one night with the four crown in the fall. Um, in the pits, I mean, it was it was business as usual. I mean, you had Joey Saldana going out quick and qualifying. Not Didn't set fast time both nights this time. So broke, broke that streak a little bit. Uh, Paul McMahon out there going fast. Had the Larson Marks team, of course, picking up the win. Uh, on the first night, and then you had David Gravel coming out in the Roth car, um, getting the win on Saturday night. So it was a uh, that was good, impressive. Yeah, it, it was. Really was. They it was, were three wide. Yeah. On Saturday oh, night. Saturday night the track was amazing. Uh, you had changing track conditions. You know, with it was windy there both Friday and Saturday. Uh, overcast all day Friday. It was a little bit chilly. Saturday the sun came out. Um, I think a lot of guys had issues on Saturday with the changing track conditions where their cars were fast earlier in the night. Uh, they were, you know, good, guys were good in qualifying, good, good in the heat races. And as the race went on, guys that were fast just started sliding back and um, saw a couple, you know, the different lines on the track. Randy Hannigan was running around the bottom, just pretty much ignoring everybody else. Uh, he got up there into the top three. Um, gravel was using the middle. Pittman was running on the top. So, and it was exciting. And Donnie Schatz, never count him out. He came from 19th to 5th. And picked up that KSC Hard Charger Award. And, uh, you know, that was very interesting that you say that the track kind of slicked off a little bit because if you look at the victory lane photo from Saturday night, Gravel had the wing on that number 83 Roth Enterprises machine all the way in the trunk, all the way pulled back. So well, that thing almost and, looked awkward, didn't it? <laughs> well, he's, <laughs> he's, Christmas. He's, that looked like shades of Jason Myers there. Yeah, it, it did. It looked like a Tarleton or a Jason Myers deal out west in California like they do. He, uh, the wings pulled back, baby. He started the race out like that. I mean, it was he had it pulled back from the get-go. Hmm, very interesting, very interesting. So uh, so all in all, good weekend at Eldora, Nick? Yeah, it was good. I and mean, it's always always great to get out, get out there and, uh, you know, go visit the girls in the merch trailers and mm-hmm. see how they're doing and, you know, talk to some of the guys down the pits and hear how happy they are with their shirts. So uh, it always, always kind of inflates the ego a little bit getting out there. All right, well, we'll get our hammers back and make sure that's pounded back into submission by the end of this week. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, you see her with us. I mean, sales department can figure that out for you. Yeah, huh. Neil Quick, salesman extraordinaire. Really is, actually. That was a recap of what happened this past weekend over at Eldora. Thank you very much, uh, Nick. And, you know, guys, coming up, we have a preview of what I think is going to be a very exciting weekend for the World of Outlaws STP Sprint Cars. They will be going to Jacksonville Speedway, Wilmot, and Tri-State Speedway in Hobstadt, Indiana. Three races coming up, a uh, variety of different tracks, high banked, uh, kind of a middle banking and then a low bank track, and you know varying sizes. They're all fairly small, but each one presents a unique challenge. Who are you guys looking at this coming weekend to really kind of separate themselves as we have a tight point battle up at the top? I think looking at tomorrow night in Jacksonville, it's a it's a wild card deal. Track's so small, such a bull ring. Uh, I think Nick would have to agree. I think you can pretty well throw out uh, a blanket and, and include ten names in there. You can include the regulars that have been good all through through the year, Joey and Paul and uh, Donnie. Um, but this is a place that you see in Illinois here where a local series like Malo that runs good. So you could have somebody that runs that series good, like an Ian Madsen come up and get somebody or something along, somebody along that line. So uh, being a local 410 style track, I think that uh, it's kind of a wild card out of the shoot tomorrow night. I think it's going to come down uh, qualifying, honestly, and your, your starting position in the dash. Um, track looks really narrow. It looks like it's going to be hard to pass on. So Really, where you start in your heat race, where you start in the dash, um, I, I wouldn't look to see a whole lot of passing. I would look to see the uh, I would look to see the finishing order be very similar to what the starting order was. 
Hmm. I, th- I would definitely agree with you guys, and there might be a few drivers that use the old chrome horn to move a few of their fellow drivers up and out of the way, and that might be uh, the way that you advance your position when it comes to these tracks. We're, we're talking about uh, Jacksonville, Wilmot, and Hobstadt, and you know, I want to highlight Tri-State Speedway and Hobstadt just a little bit. That is Tommy Hilfricht and his entire family and crew out there put a phenomenal show on each and every year that the Outlaws go there. It truly is one of the most exciting races, I think, of each World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series season. Yeah, they do a great job uh, bringing the sprint cars there and uh, accommodating the fans, and it's a, a great facility, uh, good good racing facility. I mean, it's uh a place where you can see him run high, low, all over the track, and mm-hmm. um, really, really works out well. I, I, everybody looks forward to Hobstop being on the schedule. Yeah, I just, I honestly got to Hobstop for the first time maybe three or four years back, and I was blown away. I, you know, I, I heard Dad talk about it before, heard my sister talk about it from all the years that they went there, but uh, I had just never made it down there, and now it's probably in my top five of favorite tracks. Um, this weekend, I, I've, I've got to go with Joey down there. He was running so strong last year, and that you know that was before they made the switch over to the GF1 chassis. That's mm-hmm. still earlier in the year when they were running the Eagles. Um, he was really strong down there last year. Him and Dara got caught up in a little bit of a mess. Um, kind of moved both of them back in the field. Joey had to pull in, uh, but he's good at that track. Uh, I expect I expect this, that 71M team to get their third win of the year down there. All right. Well, there's some bold predictions there. What's going el- or excuse me, what else is going on in the racing world? Uh, the King of the West Series is at Petaluma this coming weekend. We'll have to see if Rico Abreu can notch win number eight in a wing sprint car for 2014 so far. And and Squeal, I'm going to leave this one up to you. Where is Kenny Wallace this weekend? Uh, it sounds like Kenny's going to be doing uh, possibly Quincy Raceways on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, and he might be doing some pavement racing, too, this weekend. Yeah, he's going to do Lebanon Saturday night. He's not going to be actually in the Jags Modified. He's actually driving for somebody at Lebanon, uh, which is a paved uh, facility. Very, very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to be doing uh, some modified racing and uh, late models the same night there. So uh be interesting to see what he does there, too. You're absolutely right there, and uh, we certainly give our best wishes and good luck out to all of the Team R&R drivers heading out for competition this week and this weekend. We hope to hear about a lot of wins come next week as we get ready to do Gas and Glory. Doing Gas and Glory on YouTube with this episode, we want to remind you to check that on out. We've got some cool stuff there up on the video screen. We took a look at Shane's uh, apparel right there. It looked awesome. And we want to remind you, and please, please, please do this. If you look in the top right of the video player, you'll see the R&R logo. Click on that, and that will allow you to subscribe to our channel. So anytime we put out something new, so if you want to see the latest and greatest in apparel and merchandise from r r Enterprises, subscribing to our YouTube channel will give you a notification each and every time we put out a new video or something like that so you can stay up to date with what we are doing here. And now that we got all of that stuff out of the way, it is now time for one of our favorite segments here on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Squeal or No Squeal. We posed three racing-related questions to Squeal and Neil Quick. If he agrees, he says Squeal. If he does not agree, he says No Squeal. And this week, we are very lucky to have additional commentary from Nick. So Squeal, are you ready for question number one? You guys set me up for this again this week and you're throwing Nerd Racer at me. Come on now. (laughs) All right, here we go. Squeal or no squeal, question number one. The straightaways at Jacksonville Speedway in Illinois are shorter than the lengths of many of the World of Outlaws trailers. Jacksonville has straightaways? (laughs) I'm going squeal, Kyle. (laughs) It's it's pretty small up there, man. Pretty tight. (laughs) Jacksonville Speedway, not to pick on them too much. Uh, it looks like going to be a great show, great facility for the Outlaws, but uh, yeah, when we did take a look on uh, Google Earth, uh, the straightaways were, they were a bit short. They were, they were a bit short. It'll be an interesting race up there. It's a neat uh, facility to run, and I think it's going to provide great racing. It does, uh, it is awful tight, though. <laughs> and, and some good news that we're hearing, too, is that they sold out of their grandstand seats, which is, which is awesome. This place is going to be packed tomorrow night. There you go. Yeah, I think it's of course, being from this area originally, uh, always a good thing whenever the Outlaws add another show in this area. Uh, you mostly got Peevely, 
uh, Jacksonville now. It'd be cool to see him get back to Tri City Speedway. Uh, I grew up, you know, going there to watch them run. So. I'd like to see him get back to the big track, like Sedalia or someplace yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Not too far away. Yeah, Sedalia out in the middle of the state of Missouri. Time for question number two of Squeal or No Squeal. Rico Abreu ends up with the most wing sprint car wins this season. Squeal or No Squeal? Squeal, he's on his way. Check him in for the most wins. I'm, I'm really interested to see what uh, how he finishes out that King of the West series. I mean, it's right now it's can anybody beat Rico out west there? And uh, I'm sure they're going to throw in some winged out all shows in there with him. So uh, I'm going Squeal. Rico's going to be hard to beat this year. As competitive as the World of Outlaws have been with many different drivers getting wins this year, uh, I don't think you're going to see Donnie Shots roll off 20 wins. You may. It, it could happen later in the year. They seem to get hot after the Kings Royal, but um, I think Rico has a really good shot of winning more wing sprint car, sprint car races than anybody else this year based on the competition level of the Outlaws themselves. Oh, there you go. There's a pair of squeals right there. And finally, the last question in Squeal or No Squeal. Nerd Racer Nick replaces squealing on the show. Squeal or No Squeal? Squeal, I'm out. <laughs> can't do that you can't retire oh, i gotta this come soon. back and do this oh. yeah yeah nick is only here uh, nick comes over and uh i thought chance. we were i thought this was we were strictly working nerd racer in for this replacement uh you're you're, you're not that lucky anyways you got to come and spend time with me every week bud oh i didn't sign the contract on this you got your ponytails there i don't think you're in a negotiation position here no it's uh fun having nerd racer here and uh hope we can uh, do this more often yeah i'll be back around yeah, he says it as his voice cracks. Check in next time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for Peter Brady, Squeal and Neil Quick, and Kaya Looters. And remember, you can pick up your favorite driver's gear at www.r-racewear.com, the web's largest store for dirt track racing merchandise. On behalf of everyone here at r r Enterprises, he's Neil Quick and he's Nick Stevens. My name is Kaya Looters, and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to Gas and Glory, presented by r r Enterprises. All rights reserved. Please visit the web's largest sprint car store today at www.r-rracewear.com. The views and opinions expressed in the show are the host and guest alone and do not directly reflect those of r r Enterprises.